The Luftwaffe's Mistel, or Mistletoe, was a unique German composite aircraft configuration used during the last months of World War II. Alongside jet-powered aircraft like the Arado AR-234 bomber or the Messerschmitt ME-262 fighter, the Mistletoe was one of Hermann Göring's last attempts to destroy their enemies. The Mistel was a composite aircraft configuration consisting of a larger unmanned aircraft packed with heavy explosives and a smaller piloted control aircraft mounted above it. The most used configuration involved a modified Junkers Ju-88 bomber as the missile explosive drone and a Messerschmitt Bf-109 fighter joined to it by struts. The Germans would guide the bomber drone and launch it against its objective. Its explosives could penetrate more than 7 meters of concrete and 5 meters of reinforced steel. The composite aircraft first saw action during the summer of 1944 when the Allies invaded Normandy. They were also infamously used in the attempt to destroy the British fleet stationed in Scapa Flow. However, the Mistel was able to terrorize British fleets when word got around that Germany was amassing an army of these explosive drones. Air and Naval Superiority When World War II broke out and the Third Reich took over most of Europe, their military operations were going as planned. But it all changed after the invasion of the Soviet Union. As the war dragged on and Germany began to lose its advantage over land, air, and sea, the armed forces grew desperate with every continuous setback they suffered. All their major cities were being bombed indiscriminately by American and British bombing raids. Factories were being constantly destroyed, and production of new aircraft, submarines, weapons, and supplies was dwindling at an alarming rate. The Wunderwaffe, or Wonder Weapons, were the last hope Germans had to change the tide in their favor. But they would arrive too late to make a difference. Meanwhile, the overwhelming number of aircraft at the United States Army Air Forces and the British Royal Air Force increased every day. As Germany's defeat loomed on the horizon, the Reich's desperation to get rid of the British naval blockade in Scapa Flow, Scotland, reached new heights by 1943. The British home fleet, anchored in Scapa Flow, blocked German access to the North Sea and Baltic Sea, forcing the Kriegsmarine to adopt perilous alternatives to reach its objectives. There were no aircraft capable of taking off from German-controlled territories to attack the enemy fleet at Scapa Flow and return safely. It was a one-way trip, and the Luftwaffe was unwilling to lose pilots and aircraft that were desperately needed in the western and eastern fronts. It was during these pressing circumstances that Flugkapitän Siegfried Holtzbauer, the Junkers Company's chief test pilot, had an idea to wreak havoc on the British fleet at Scapa Flow. Holtzbauer's idea could inflict heavy losses on the Royal Navy while suffering minimal German casualties. The strange concept that the aviator proposed caught the attention of Hermann Göring himself, and the head of the Luftwaffe ordered the immediate testing of such a composite aircraft. A German Kamikaze Holtzbauer's idea was not precisely new. Composite aircraft had been tested by the Luftwaffe as far back as the 1930s with the DSF-230 transport glider. A Messerschmitt Bf-109E or a Focke-Wulf FW-56 were used as the upper component, while the transport glider was used as the lower component to increase its range. Holtzbauer proposed retaking this idea by using old or damaged Junkers Ju-88 airframes and filling them with all sorts of explosives. They would then be flown towards a specific target and crashed after release. The pilot of the upper aircraft would control the second one with special controls. Once the desired objective was found, the pilot would release the Junkers explosive drone and return to safety without wasting more fuel. If the missions went according to plan, the attacking German aircraft could reach the area protected by the English, deliver the explosive ordnance, and make it back to their airfields without fear of landing somewhere in the ocean. If Holtzbauer's idea worked, the Luftwaffe finally had a chance to force the British to retreat their fleet at Scapa Flow and let them pass ending the naval blockade once and for all. Making it work. The RLM, or Reichsluftwaffministerium, began experimenting in early 1943 with the Junkers Ju-88 and a Messerschmitt Bf-109F. For this composite airframe configuration to work, a unique system was required to control the pilotless Ju-88 once the pilot released it mid-flight. The guiding fighter would be mounted on steel struts on top of the explosive drone, they would then separate before detonation through explosive bolts. Once the Junkers Ju-88 was released, the pilot would be able to control it through special electric flight controls from his fighter. According to Aero stories, quote, Takeoff was made on three engines, with the fighter pumping its fuel from the Ju-88, ensuring the return trip requirements. 
The flight was initially made at low altitude to avoid radar detection, and at a distance of four kilometers from the objective, the father and son climbed to 800 meters. As the pilot located its target, he would establish a 30-degree dive at a speed of roughly 600 kilometers per hour and commence the separation procedure. The pilot would then engage the JU-88's autopilot with the electric controls and jettison the bolts to free himself from the explosive ordnance and head back to base. The definitive missile, or mistletoe, as the unmanned explosive component was called, was a two-ton shaped charge with a copper or aluminum liner placed in the nose of the JU-88. Upon detonation, the explosion would create a penetrator out of the copper core that behaved like a liquid and could penetrate up to seven meters of reinforced steel and concrete. The Twilight of the Eagle In early 1944, a Mistel with a shaped hollow explosive charge was successfully tested against the captured World War I French battleship Ocean. Fifteen conversions were then approved under the codename Beethoven. The Luftwaffe would later approve more than 200 other composites. By the fall, a dozen missiles were selected to target strategic Soviet facilities to halt their armament production and destroy the electricity power stations around Moscow and Gorky. The operation was called Iron Hammer, but it was eventually postponed because the Soviet push was relentless and there were technical problems. Starting in May of 1944, German attempts to strike Scapa Flow constantly changed thanks to bad weather and clear nights that made the missiles easy targets for Allied aircraft patrolling the shores of Europe and England. Meanwhile, several missiles were used during the invasion of Normandy in June with little success. The rest were sent to destroy Allied ships anchored at the Seine River Bay. One last attempt to attack Scapa Flow was taken into consideration in February of 1945. The operation was called Operation Dragon Lair. Hundreds of pilots were given a quick briefing about the operation. Sergeant Rudy Reeld recalled that, quote, As far as the Scapa Flow attack plan was concerned, we received only one proper briefing, which took place in a large room of a country house near the airfield, in which was a large map of the Scapa Flow area. We had a specially built model of the harbor, on which were laid scale models of all the ships known to be there. Each pilot was assigned an individual target. Colonel Werner Bombach, who was tasked with leading the missile squadron, believed it would be a suicide mission. Missile pilot Baldwin Pauli would later write in a letter that in Bombach's opinion, quote, the mission was not essential to the war effort, and in all probability, we stood to incur a casualty rate of about 80%. So using certain channels, he had deliberately betrayed the operation. Still, just as the pilots were about to take off on February 14th, a Royal Air Force bombing raid destroyed most of the aircraft on the ground, leading Goering to ditch the plan. Around the same time in February of 1945, Operation Iron Hammer was resurrected, targeting Russian power stations. More than a hundred missiles and dozens of fighters waited near Berlin for favorable weather conditions, but a U.S. raid on the Rechtman Military Aviation Test Headquarters facility destroyed 18 missiles, and the plan was halted. The Luftwaffe decided instead to take out tactical bridges and crossing points to stop the advances of communist forces. And by March of 1945, the little-known Special Luftwaffe Unit Battle Wing 200, or KG-200, was tasked to destroy more than 100 bridges in the Vistula, Nysa, and Odea rivers. The mission was successful, but the Red Army engineers quickly built emergency bridges for their troops to make their way into Germany. In May of 1945, the Americans found about 50 missiles scattered across German factories. Still, they were barely analyzed and only considered a weapon of circumstance. And by the end of the war, the remaining missiles were sent to the scrapyard. A variation of a Focke-Wulf FW-190, the fighter part of a missile system captured by British forces in 1945, can be appreciated at the Imperial War Museum in London. The aircraft still retains the ball joints with explosive bolts that attached it to its Junkers Ju-88 counterpart. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our Dark Skies channel to watch more content about legendary and strange aircraft. And tell us in the comments below what you think about this unique German composite aircraft. <laughs>